Hi, I'm Freedom Coder, and in this part of the PCG series, I will show you how to create custom nodes for the node graph. So in previous videos, we've all just used the existing nodes in Unreal uh, that are already in the system, but most uh, of these nodes are actually blueprints, and you can create your own blueprints and then use them in your graph. Uh, to create them, uh, you go and create a new PCG uh, blueprint element. I will name that uh, our node. And open that up. Uh, and I can already tell you the first part of this will be sort of a lot of boilerplate and I've tried to simplify it down as much as I think is necessary. Uh, you can always check the PCG plugin itself. There are a ton of nodes and you can check how they are uh, working and figure out, you know, what else you can do in nodes. Um, okay, so the first thing you need to do is uh, overwrite a function called execute, uh, or execute with context in this case. This seems to be the one that takes sort of all the inputs and stuff um, from, from the node and then, you know, does something with it. And uh, by default, so if I and just quickly compile this node, I can already put that in the PCG graph. So if I drag that in, you can see here's our node and it's already there, it doesn't do anything. Um, and in the class defaults, you can give it like more input and output pins. By default, every node just gets a default in and out pin, uh, but you can add more uh, of like, you know, our whatever you need. So I call it test and you can also specify what kind of data you allow in. Um, so let's just say it's points, for example, and then it shows up as you can then put points in. Uh, for now, we'll just use the default input pin because that's kind of a general, uh, you can just plug in anything and we assume you'll be plugging in points and that's what, what we'll deal with. So first thing you need to do is get the input and or like the struct and uh, call a function that is called get inputs. This gives you all of the values that can be put in. In our case, it's only one node, uh, one pin. So uh, we'll just get the very first one. Um, so lots of Epic's default nodes do a bunch of checks that I have omitted here. And it's probably a good idea to go back and see like, okay, which calls are safe. Um, I haven't had anything crash yet, but it's uh, for the sake of the tutorial, I'm gonna just skip over all the safety things and I'm just gonna do the absolute minimum and um, which will probably in some cases turn into crashes or warnings or errors. So be aware of that. Um, so from this point, we'll break uh, this data and this gets us the actual data that we cast to uh, spatial data. So this is like points and stuff. And then um, we get, we, we do a thing that's called two point data with context. Uh, I'm honestly not sure quite exactly what all of this does. I mean, I can kind of think about what it does. Epic has stated in their presentation that they wanna improve and um, simplify the API a lot. So I imagine this is something that's going to change a lot in the future uh, to be easier to access, um, but we'll see. And then once we have this, this data, we can run a function called loop on points, uh, loop on points. And the way, as I understand it, that these nodes work is that you have a specific, like specific methods you call and they get executed in parallel on a different thread. And when they're done, like the data gets kind of returned. And uh, there are a bunch of these. So for example, in this case, I have called loop on points, which takes a like one data set of points and loops through every one once and executes the function body every like once per point. And the function body that gets executed is the point loop body. So this is the one we call, and this is the one that gets executed. Um, I still need to connect everything up, so let me just quickly do that. Uh, get 
all the execution pins connected and uh, this is kind of important so if our, our like the default pin that this node takes is like an everything pin so everything can be plugged into this but if that's not point data then we'll just don't run the loop like don't run the function so it just returns nothing um, in the case that it does work we need to kind of convert this back into points oh actually i forgot to connect the context there we go um, and this is kind of the reverse of all the breaking stuff here so we'll just make uh, tag bcg data and then that we'll have to make it to an array and the head will have to make into a pcg collection and that we can finally plug into the output uh, again i assume this is sort of a bit early stages to have all these like data conversion um done okay and this at this point this function you can get you can give this node a set of points and it'll run over the points which just it won't do anything because the actual body is empty Actually, it will do something. It will kind of delete all the points because you like nothing is gets returned. Um, so each point gets executed once, uh, and you get the data in this point here, and then you can get it out there. Um, and if you don't return it, the point gets like removed from the data set. So if we call our set members uh, of this point, we can change the point. Um, for this example, what I'm going to do is I'll create a node that will change the point's dimension based on the density the point has. So simply like low density points will be tiny and large density points will be tall. Um, and that's all the method is going to do. So I'm just going to connect this out and I want to set the min and max uh, bounds. And from the point we want to get, so we'll break it, and we'll want to get the density. So pretty much the bounce min, what's that? Something like minus 50, minus 50, and zero. That would be like a square on the floor. And then the max uh, will make a vector uh, that would be plus 50, plus 50. So at this point, we'll just have a flat square um, that has no height at all, uh, but we'll plug the density into Z. Uh, that way, it'll get taller the higher the density is. Now, the density is from the value 0 to 1, so this will not really do anything. So what I'm going to do is I'll multiply this with, with like a 1,000. So it'll actually be very visible. Okay, compile that and head back to our node here and I'm gonna plug this into our node and disable this preview and enable this debug and you can see we have low density points being very flat and high density points are very tall. Uh, another cool thing you can do in the node is let's say I want to expose this as a parameter so I'll put um, I promote it to a variable and it's just like any other blueprint you just we'll just name it max height and it's a float and you expose it as editable and in the graph if you click the node you have max height exposed as a parameter and now you can change this and a bunch of nodes mostly those who this that are like blueish have a bluish tint they are blueprints and you can actually open them up if you double click them Oh, it's obviously going to a different window now, but yes, they do open up if you double click them. So if you have a node, let's say the uh, mesh two points from previously, that's also a blueprint. And if you double click this, it will uh, open up the mesh two points and you can try your best at reverse engineering this because they are really complex. Um, well, some of them are, some of them aren't that complex, but yeah, a lot can be learned from just looking at the code that other people had done. <laughs>
Um, yeah, and at this point, you are free to write your own notes, do your own thing. If you have multiple inputs, um, you can use different arrays. You can actually also get the inputs by their labels. So this is something that seems to be the preferred way to get inputs. Uh, check out Epic's note for that, because um, I haven't quite wrapped my head around that. Uh, but this works, and I hope this helps, and you had... Um, you can go now and make your own cool notes. And I hope I see you in the next video, which should be my breakdown of the whole like jungle area tool that I did that kickstarted this whole tutorial series. So I hope I see you then and uh, bye.